Now, let us do this use case of uh, volume and price relationship that we typically see in marketing data sets with a small hands-on and I'm going to walk you through an R program and also execute it and explain some of the things which we just uh, you know just discussed a, a little while ago in the form of ordinarily square concept right so let's go and estimate a regression based model with a small r program to understand relationship between volume and prices okay so this is where we have an r program and we are going to first run a, a line of code where we load necessary libraries and the data set so so let me quickly do that so here we see that we have loaded the data of volume and the prices for a product this is data which is available over time monthly data of the various prices the product had and the volumes that i have been able to sell in a given market and these prices are available for not just the SKU that is of interest, but other competitor SKUs that are there in the market, which actually compete with you to, to sell within the same category, right? So this is the data set. And the first thing that I'm, I'm going to do here is to define what is the dependent variable, what are the independent variables. So in the terminology we just used, we use X for independent variables, we use Y for the dependent variable, right? So this is a piece of code that I'm running here, will create my X and Y matrices, right? We also know in regression analysis, there is a term called as intercept or a constant, which is what is taught to you. So here in this line, num line, num line 22 of code, I'm actually coding the intercept data as well for the regression model. Okay, now let's try and estimate this model using the, the formula that we just saw, x prime x inverse x prime y. So what you see here on line number 26 is transpose of x matrix multiplied by x itself and an inverse of that is what is taken and then that is what is multiplied with x transpose y, right? So I'm going to execute line number 26. And what you see here are two estimates. The first estimate is what is for the intercept. The second estimate is what is for the, the price variable. And the order of these estimates is actually in line with uh, the x variables that I have input. So if you see line number 22 of the code, the first variable is intercept, the second variable is, is the log price, right? And uh, let us quickly check uh, what is the value of uh, x prime x inverse. So x prime x inverse is, is a matrix that, that you see here. And let us take a look at that this particular x prime x inverse is actually a non-zero matrix, right? So it is actually an invertible matrix and we are therefore able to estimate the regression model beta coefficients. There is also another aspect that we, that we study as part of regression analysis that all these estimates have standard errors. Standard errors because when we work with samples, you might get one set of estimates. If you work with another sample, you, you might get another set of estimates, right? So what is the confidence that these estimates are really different from zero? Right. So this is where uh, in, in statistics you have to uh, justify that the estimates are really different from zero and that's where I need to have standard errors. So the calculation of standard errors is, uh, is scored from line number 32 to line number 36. And what I do see is uh, the, the standard errors are, are available for uh, the regression model that I have estimated. And let me run code on line number 38 as well. So this gives me the estimates as well as the standard errors uh, around that estimate, right? Now, you may have studied regression with the readily available package LM that's available with R. Let's try to get 
the same numbers with package lm so i have run regression on line number 42 of the code where i am regressing the volume with log price log of volume with log price and i get the estimates which are exactly similar to what i have got uh, here with my x prime x inverse x prime y right so the in intercept or constant term is 24.22 the the price effect is minus 1.18 the standard error for the price is about 1 unit, 0.99 if you see here. And the standard error which I calculated using the matrix formula again is 1.02. So essentially what your tool is, is doing is exactly same as what we have done using matrices calculations just now in front of you using first principle coding, right? Now let's take a look at how to represent this relationship when I, you know, do a linear regression. So you can easily see, uh, this is the same data I have plotted, and you can easily see as the, the price of the product increases, the, the amount of quantity or the quantity of product I'm able to sell, its volumes are actually declining. And that is what is captured by this uh, negative sloping line here. And this is an illustration of uh, regression analysis that you have uh, an inverse price and volume relationship. If I increase the price, I expect volumes to go down, right? And one of the key um, requirements for the ordinary square estimator is that X prime X inverse matrix must exist, right? It must be a non-singular matrix, right? So what makes it a singular matrix? under what circumstances can this matrix become a singular matrix, right? So we know um, a particular matrix that is rank deficient or that is not full rank, when I can have one of the columns of such a matrix expressed as a linear combination of other columns. So you think of it this way, if I had two columns which are exact multiples of each other, then such a matrix can be reduced to a lower rank matrix. In this case, if there are exactly two columns that are exact multiples, the rank of such a matrix will be lower by one, right? So for X prime X to be a full rank matrix, I cannot create features just by adding, subtracting uh, features that are already available to me. I cannot create another feature X3 if I have two features X1 and X2 by adding x1 plus x2 equal to x3 because that x3 feature will not have any new information the the matrix that i create with x1 x2 x3 will not be full rank and my formula will will not actually work right so this is the key idea if two features are completely correlated we cannot keep all those features in in our model because you are not able to clearly estimate what is the impact of a highly correlated feature in a, in a model, yes? So X prime X must be a full rank matrix, right? Now let's try and motivate the same example with uh, the larger SKU of the same brand when I do these price changes. So brands typically make the price changes, price revisions, they typically happen for all the SKUs, right? So let's say a 5% increase in price is what you are passing on for your SKUs. That is passed on to uh, all the SKUs within the brand, right? So it is quite possible that you will have the prices of SKUs of the same brand very highly correlated, right? So if I try to add another price variable, variable here uh, to understand what is its impact on on the focal SKU volumes. <laughs>